Hello YouTube, it's Max One Chase One. Today's segment I'm gonna be showing uh, some of the how you can do it or do it yourself tip is how to change the coolant filter on a ISM 370 Cummins engine. Uh, this is in my RV hauler. I'm here in front of my house. Um, notice that it's it's backed in and this is facing the front. The coolant is on the right side, so I'm gonna go around to the right side. This is the right side of the engine, same place where you check your oil and your air oil. Right down in that area down there is where it's located. So here's your air filter that's here, so it's on the same side. Right down in the lower right side of the engine as you're facing forward. And I'm gonna get up, get ready to go down and get up under it. And I'm gonna show you exactly where it is and how you can change it. And always for safety, if you're gonna get up on the truck, make sure you chalk your wheels. Uh, some people chalk one wheel, but what I did, I chalked the left rear, and I chalked the left front. Never be sorry. Okay, now I'm up under the truck. There's the oil pan. So the truck is facing forward. There's the oil filter. And right behind it is the coolant filter. That's the coolant filter right here. All right, so we just take that oil filter off just like you do a car auto wrench. Now before I take it off, you see that little turn valve right there? Make sure you turn that valve off because that'll stop any water from continuing to flush out from the system. So you pretty much may not have to purge the system of any air, so you can stop it all from right there. So turn that uh, valve off till it's crossways. Right now it's going up and down. I'm going to turn it crossways like a little pet car. Now sometimes also too, that little pet car, it gets, if you haven't changed it in a while, you can kind of see my uh, coolant filter ain't been changed in a while. Either that's road debris and rain and all that stuff. Um, but what it is, is that sometimes that will stick a little bit. I'm going to take mine anyway and I'm going to spray some uh, blaster on it just to loosen it up a little bit so it can turn freely. Alright, let me get my tool ready and we'll go from there. Okay, I got my blaster here. I'm just going to shoot just a little bit, not much. Not sure if I do it. Careful of the blaster while you're looking up. Don't get it in your eye. The only tools that you need would be some PB blaster, a pair of uh, pliers, or either a crescent wrench and a small tub. And this small tub, I really don't need it if you be careful. But all thing about this is to catch any excess. Uh, coolant that may uh, just come off between the the pet cock and where the filter is and so you might get just a little bit of a drip so you might want to catch that and just let that fall into the pan I forgot to add the uh, the most important which is the coolant filter there's the part number you can get the part place and they'll select the right one for you and the coolant filter wrench wouldn't hurt to have a rag handy. All right, let's get ready to go get started. Okay, I got my wrench on the petcock and I'm just gonna pull down on it till it's halfway across. And now it's halfway across and that's shut off. Let's see if I can get a better shot in it. Let me show you. Now the pet cock is across ways. That's how it's supposed to be to shut the, the fluid flow off. Also, I prefer to have various types of all filter wrenches available. Uh, this one is good when you have the filter that's close to the engine block. Uh, but this one won't work because of the thickness here. And this is the case where I'm at right now. Uh, the coolant filter is close to the engine block, so this didn't want to fit. 
and if that didn't work or that one didn't work then the old strap type design will always work all right and then also to make sure you got the right size uh, socket and an extension so you can have good reach to it okay YouTube like I said uh, get you a good uh, all filter wrench and that wrench couldn't do it that couldn't do it the one I had with a nylon strap that couldn't do it uh, it's been about three years or four years since I changed this filter and I guess with the road rash and all that stuff made it kind of stick to it a little bit up in the toward the petcock where the water flow would come into the filter so I had to go to Harbor Freight and get me one of these vice grip um, all filter wrenches and that actually really did the help also too I took some PBR reached over the top sprayed as much as I could around here and then that PBR soaked into that gasket and that gasket really loosened up and it was kind of really easy to come off now after I took the filter out that's all the fluid that came down I kept the the filter upright like this until I got it to the uh, the, the waste basket and then uh, just empty it into that um, now let's like say I, all you got to do now is just get your new filter now what I did I filled my filter up all the way up there to the top and I took a light coat of oil just like you do with the engine oil and it just went over here a real light coat so this doesn't stick to the attachment where the filter goes to and after that I just screwed it on just like an oil filter on a car uh, hand tight and then after that take your filter wrench and go a quarter of a turn more if you want to go a little bit more of a quarter of a turn all depends on how much it uh, compresses when you get ready to tighten it up alright now I'm going to show you that I'm going to go back up on there and all I'm going to do now is turn the pet cock on start the engine make sure it don't have any leaks alright all right, now the sun is going down, but you can see I screwed the new filter on. I'm going to reach up there and grab the petcock. Now, I did work that petcock a couple of times, so I don't have to use the wrench now. So all I got to do is just take my finger and twist it to the straight up and down position. Just like that. Let me see if I can get you a better look at it. So it's just like that. And then I'm going to let whatever fluid they need to go, that little bit to the suspect should show up on the reservoir. And I've got some other uh, antifreeze I can add to it. But I don't think it's that much that's going to come back because the filter was already full. And now since you're finished, make sure you take a rag. Wipe up any excess uh, antifreeze you might have had here. So when you go to start the truck and after that, uh, to make sure you have any leaks, it will show up here if you had any leaks. Alright YouTube, that's how you change the coolant filter on a uh, ISM 370 Cummins and some motorhomes may be different, some trucks may be different but uh, always look for that petcock at the top of the filter and make sure you turn that off before you um, take the filter off and also too this can save you all the money from having to take it to the shop uh, you can do this at a truck stop rest area or either at a campground wherever you're uh, parked at if you want to take time to do it all right again YouTube uh, like share give me a couple comments um, but get you one of those adjustable uh, uh, vice grip uh, all filter wrenches from Harbor Freight believe me it makes it universal that you can use it for any type of oil filter again thanks for watching Max one, chase another one.